Recently, Netflix aired its new film, The Discovery, a sci-fi tale about a scientist who discovers proof of the afterlife. How can you keep a discovery so vital to our existence a secret? Or some form of conscious survival after the death of the body. I prefer to call it a new plane of existence. This discovery causes a wave of people wanting to reset their existence to commit suicide. The film is by Charlie McDowell and stars Robert Redford, uh, Mara Rooney, and Jason Siegel. Now, the afterlife is a subject humans have been contemplating for at least 100,000 years, and since my next book, Heavens on Earth, is about the scientific search for immortality, the afterlife, and utopia, I thought I would make a few observations on the film in particular and the topic in general. First, unlike religions that postulate the survival of the soul without explaining how precisely this allegedly happens, the discovery actually explains that our self-identity is contained in our consciousness and that this survives death at a subatomic level. It doesn't go any further, but this idea is a real theory postulated by a wide range of people from the physicist Roger Penrose to the physician Deepak Chopra that goes under the name of quantum consciousness. In various forms, it holds that our minds are not strictly the product of our brains, but that consciousness exists separately from our brains, which act like a radio or television receiver to transmit the information into our brains. As I argue in my book, this makes no sense because the only reason radios and televisions pick up electromagnetic signals and transduce them into sounds and images is because there are radio and television studios broadcasting them. There is no cosmic equivalent to consciousness studios broadcasting information into our brains. Second, the discovery, like so many other popular science fiction scenarios about the survival of death through technological breakthroughs, assumes that our memories are permanently recorded in the brain such that if they could be copied and pasted or transduced through some recording device, we will know what that person was seeing, hearing, thinking, and even feeling. But that is not how memory works. It's not like a DVR recording device that lets you play back the past on the theater of your mind and skipping the commercials along the way. No, memory is a continually edited and fluid process that completely relies on the neurons in your brain being functional. Although it is true that when you go to sleep and wake up the next morning or go under anesthesia for surgery and come back hours later, your memories return. But that cannot happen if your brain actually dies. That's why CPR has to be done so soon after a heart attack or drowning. Because if the brain is starved of oxygen-rich blood, the neurons storing your memories will die. And with them, your memories and yourself will die. Third, finally, there is a presumption that resurrecting your physical self, as religions envision, or copying your brain's connectome and uploading it into a computer, as scientists are trying to do now, will result in you waking up like from a long sleep, either in a religious heaven or a scientist's computer. But that would not happen. A copy of you or your mind is not you, it's a copy no different than a twin would be to its twin. And no twin looks at the other one and thinks, there I am. Personhood depends not just on intact memories, but on a personal point of view, your POV self, the self looking out at the world through your eyes. That is what happens when you wake up after a sleep. That would not happen if we simply made a copy of you and instantiated it elsewhere, either in heaven or in a lab. In the end, what science tells us is that this is all there is. And unless and until technologies are developed to extend our lives indefinitely, we must cherish every moment, every day, every relationship, every friendship, and every sentient being on Earth, a provisional proscenium in the drama of the cosmos. Have any of you seen this film? I'd love to know your thoughts about it. I'm Michael Shermer from Skeptic Magazine. Check us out at skeptic.com. If there is no God, is murder wrong? On the popular online site Prager University, 
the conservative radio talk show host, Dennis Prager, recently posted a video, If There Is No God, Murder Isn't Wrong. 